Okay, so Kim's here. We identified the jacket, the library card, we've kept the composure, we discussed things through with Kim, and we have the, the handkerchief. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I don't have anything else that can increase empathy. And I have a feeling if I try and back out of talking about this now, it would cause, well, it should cause empathy to go down more. But because it's a game, I don't know whether it actually does that. I think I'm just going to have to go out, come out and say it. I mean, 28% is still pretty high for minus one empathy. Tell her about the dead body. I don't want to. Wait, what? Uh, but we have to. We have to. I don't want to do this. Turn to Kim, I don't want to do this. Turn to Kim, it seems like there's a part of me that refuses to do this. Slap your cheek, stupid, stupid, just say it. Well, that's obviously a bit weird, so... Turn to Kim, there's a part of me that refuses to do this. Do what? Officer. The lieutenant warns you. Too late, you ruined it. Just say it now. Yeah, just say it. Uh, Harry, out of anyone should know, a few days is what it takes for a good bender. Are you at that point? No. I'm not sure what point you're referring to, but yeah, uh, I think we're, we're on day four. So I think I'm at the point that you're referring to, but yeah, we just have to go ahead and say, your husband's dead, I'm sorry. The point of knowing the name. The point of knowing Harry's name, yes. The point of knowing the name of the victim, yes, it's Victor. Excuse me, what? What did you say? I took health damage, not morale damage. That's a bit weird. She's in pain. She's in so much pain. And so are you. Your chest is burning. You sense that the lieutenant is ready to say something. Don't let him. Fix this yourself. You did this. Hmm. Hmm. You can just go to sleep and skip time. And some people have missed the name until this point. Yes, that's true. So, yeah. Uh, I can skip a lot of shit. That's, yeah, I guess so. You could, if you wanted to, do a speed run of the game and just say, right, I want, just want to get to the end of the game and do the main story. But, no, I've been taking this game pretty slowly. I did get myself into this. I want to try and get myself out. Kim, I can handle this. Let me. The lieutenant closes his mouth, but he doesn't look pleased. I know. Just tell me what happened to Victor. He looks first at Lieutenant, then back at you. Your husband has expired. He's in a better place now. I said that he's dead. Okay. Saying someone's expired is not great. Because it's kind of dancing around the actual issue. He's in a better place now is a little bit more optimistic, but... Uh, still, you're telling someone that they're dead. I said that he's dead. This is a bit more blunt. I think it's too blunt for this. I want to say he's in a better place now to try and soften it a little bit. Where? Did he run away? No, he's dead. Oh. Just dead. Yes, I... He chokes on something, clutching onto her neck. I'm sorry, I just need a... I don't know what to say. She rests her hand on her forehead, eyes pale like pearls and seawater. I don't want to do this or say nothing. I'm just going to have to say nothing. I guess what I want to know is, how did he die? Uh, he drank himself to death. He fell and smashed his head against the bench. Trust me, ma'am, you don't want to know. <sighs> Need to be blunt. Yeah. The thing is, is that if you're not up front and telling people exactly what happened and how, they will come to their own conclusions and what they come up with isn't necessarily the truth. So you need to tell them the truth so that they can accept it and gain closure. So I'm going to have to say he fell and smashed his head against the bench. And you just found him there? Lying in the cold. He shakes her head. How long had he been there? It's hard to say. For a few days at least. Very long, ma'am. I'm sorry. For a few days at least. She doesn't reply. Her eyes well up with tears. 
as she struggles to keep it together. You hear the clock ticking in the children's room. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? I mean, the children, maybe, but... No, no. I just need to tell my girls. The air gets sucked out of her lungs suddenly. It burns like acid. Unreal. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? Smack your lips, look away, yes. Smack your lips? This reminds me of the time I was told my father was killed. Just shock, no tears, no nothing. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, in terms of my personal family, I've not really had that many instances of personal loss. I mean, grandparents, but, you know, it's a bit different to having, like, a direct family member. Um... Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Raja. And for the working class woman, I think they need to know, so yes. All right. I'll call them. Yeah, it's always hard. Yeah, it's just, it's not an easy thing to deal with or come to terms with, so there's just no point trying to... There's no point trying to sugarcoat it to the extent that it's not real for them. It was a while ago, thanks, though. Yeah. All right. She can't take much more. Her stomach is churning. Soon, she will have to go to the bathroom and scream. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? I think we would have notified the precinct to collect the body, right? But then she would have to go to the morgue to identify him? For God's sake, lie. I don't know where they go. He's still there on the boardwalk. He's in the morgue. Uh, again, I'm a police officer. I should know where they go. Did we not inform the precinct to say there's a body here? Can you pick it up? So yeah, we're going to say he's in the morgue. And who should I contact? The police station? He was taken to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. He hands her a leaflet with the morgue's contact information. So you could just outright say, oh yeah, he's still on the boardwalk, even though he's not actually there. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? Uh, the situation reminds me of that. Having to come up with that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's fine. You, you do what you need to do, Raja. I know it's, it's always difficult when things like this come up in, you know, games or media, and it's like, you're not expecting it. It takes you by surprise. So you go ahead and, you know, take your time. No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still a bit... She rubs her face, blotchy and numb. Sorry I couldn't do this, I have a brain condition. Tap in your head. Alright, that's it then. Is this me trying to apologise to her for not being sensitive? I have a brain condition. That's not really gonna... She doesn't really care. But then, alright, that's it then. It's kind of like, right, that's it, job done. That's a bit callous. Have a good one. Yeah, you too, Raja. You too. Okay. Uh, all right. That's it then. Again, if there's anything we could do for you, then don't hesitate to call the RCM, ma'am. She just nods, distant and inconsolable. The bed springs rattle beneath her as she begins to shake. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon to a scream. I'll take it from here. Thank you. She points at the front door, breathing fast now, holding herself back. We should step outside and talk. Set the library card by her and leave the room. Ooh, setting the library card by her is gonna be a... That's gonna be a trigger. Alright, talk to Kim. So... The death notification. The lieutenant says as soon as you've left the apartment. I'm sorry, I know I fucked up. That did not go. There's nothing to discuss. Let's move on. I know I fucked up. It's alright. Don't worry about it. His eyes wander over the streets. I'll call the station when we are finished with the day. And let them know the name of the deceased. What about Billy and the kids? There's not much we can do for them anymore, I'm afraid. They have to. It's not your place to live their lives. 
So that's it? That's it. We should get back to our case. There's nothing more we can do here. Right, let's get back to it then. And, officer, I've seen worse. This wasn't the worst I've seen, okay? Now let's go. That's, that's nice of him. Alright, task complete. Dead body on the boardwalk. 10 XP. Alright, well... The sad end, but... Like we said, it wasn't really going to go any other way. This door is made of... And apartment 28 is after 9 o'clock. So there's nothing to do with that now. So... Let's go back to the balcony where Cindy is and see if there's anything else communism-wise over there. While we're here at the apartment blocks, we should check out the door that Everett wanted us to leave open. Because we might have a choice of leaving it open or not. I wonder if that's why we didn't get any money from him earlier, is we're not going to get any more payment until he does the thing that he wants us to do. That is very possible. Ooh, what was that? The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. More old bullet holes. Half a century at least. From the revolution. Examine closer. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. Your chest feels tight looking at them. It's closing in, caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? Lieutenant's sudden voice cuts like a blade, bringing you out of your stupor. Breathe out sharply. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Man, I started feeling really bad for a second. Might be the after effects of your... Last escapade. What are you looking at? These bullet holes look like the bullet holes we saw before. Bullet holes generally look the same, so probably. But you're right. More old bullet holes from the revolution. Man, how many people got shot during that revolution? Plenty. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm taking some health damage. I wasn't expecting that. Usually the damage you take is, uh, you the know, The door has morale. braved the elements for decades. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and so is the knocker, shaped like a lion's head. The royal lion, Guillaume's kitten. This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. Press your ear against the door. Someone is moving around in the apartment. You hear the water being turned off and the sound of dishes clinking together. So there's somebody inside. The tenant must be cleaning up. That means you're too late. Nothing more to do here. Better report back to Evera. Knock on the door. No answer. I know you're in there. That already defeats the point, doesn't it? Let's get out of here. No, let's unlock the door. The key stops midway in the lock. Something's blocking its path. Not a sound is coming from the apartment. Do they already have the key on the other side blocking it? The tenant's key is in the lock. The lieutenant looks first at the door, then back at you, then signals you to back off from the door. Let's leave. As you turn to leave, you hear footsteps on the other side. Yes, someone's definitely home. We should leave and go talk with Evra. Tell him what happened, that we couldn't open the door. Maybe there's a walk around. Maybe. Well, what's the other thing we can do? You hear the sound of running water, someone's washing dishes. Hmm. I guess, yeah, Kim's right in that I waited too long to try and open the door. But on the other hand, it means I didn't actually do the thing that he wanted me to do. So I'm not a corrupt cop. You know? Uh, not very useful for my own... Uh, personal things to, you know, get more info for, about my gun, but I can feel a bit, little bit better about it. Alright, let's talk to Alice. Inside, you see a set of steering levers. This is precinct 50. Still no word, I'm afraid. Really? Oh, wow. In the cabin, you see... I want to check the task for this, because does it say it may take some time? All back in a day. 
It's Thursday. <sighs> All right. Well, um, hmm. Nothing I can do for now. So let's go over to Evra. We can tell him about the the mishaps we've had. Oh, maybe Manana can say something about it actually, because it is his key. I can't imagine he'll have anything special to say, but maybe. Hold on, wandering man. How can I? Nope, nothing new. All right, hello, Everard. So, about opening that apartment door. Mr. Dubois, every worker, member of the board, you fucked up. You waited too long. The weasel came back, and now you can't open the door I asked you to open. The big man looks you straight in the eye. Everard forgives, Harry. Don't cry, my boy. It's going to be all right. I'm still going to tell you about the murder. That's just the way I am. Benevolent. I thought I had more time. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. I've heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. I'm listening. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. Mm -hmm. You mean our victim? A security contractor? Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa, you name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. I mean, yeah, it lines up with what the scab leader said, and it lines up with what happened with the colonel. Those Senorita Pineapple people are scary motherfuckers. Decimating your state if you don't give them your pineapples. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Hold on, you have a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village. But the mercs and their brutality are very real. Go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Wait, they move the container? Yes. I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But we know that Evra has not been in the chair, so he can clearly move by himself. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. Mm -hmm. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. An entire neighborhood of killers. Wait, the whole neighborhood is in on it? Potentially, Harry. Potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys, all ready to spring into action for their home base. I mean, that is, you know, what um, Elizabeth was saying, is that they shared the responsibility so we couldn't, you know, pin the, the murder on any specific hardy boy. Who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. It is organized crime. They're like you guys. 
idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. It is. It's vigilantism. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. But we know he was shot, not just hanged. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. But they can't have done that because the body was around for a week, which means that they've been around for at least a week themselves. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. So that's Elizabeth, okay. I want to hear again about how the strike and lynching are connected. There was a bullet in the hangman's head. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? You mentioned the lawyer girl. Tell me about Titus Hard and his crew. Good sort, let's conclude for now. There was a bullet in the hangman's head. So they shot him. He sounds pleasantly surprised. He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took a look into that yard. I thought you prided yourself on knowing specific details and information, so you didn't look into it any further? It's impossible to say if he's telling the truth, sire. What I do know is, the case is in safe hands. If anyone can get to the bottom of this shot and hanged man, it's my two little policemen. Godspeed, policemen. All right, let's get things straight. We're not your police. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? Well, we know that because the scab leader is one of them. You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. The name of the company is Krenel this time. It might have been Sediment before. Of course. You're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. The remaining mercenaries are organizing a tribunal to take on the Hardys. Tribunal? That sounds serious, Harry. We union men should be shitting ourselves. I wish you hadn't told me that. I'm going to lose sleep over this. Let's change the subject. You don't seem too worried about it. Oh, Harry, what do I really think about the tribunal? You're trying to climb to second base with old Everard before you've even courted him properly. He wants you to do more things for him before. Okay. You mentioned the lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Wait, the girl by the whirling, who was keeping an eye on you, is he talking about her? Did you send her to spy on me disguised as a gardener? I did that, didn't I? She thinks of herself as a guerrilla fighter. These middle class kids and the books they read are crazy, Harry. I think she would rather be an insurgent than a lawyer. I hope it's a phase. I'm surprised he admitted to it. 